What's up everybody, it's Bear with BearIndependent.com. Uh, today we're going to talk about five ways to deal with your protein needs for long-term preparedness. I was recently speaking with a brother of mine uh, about a conversation that he had with somebody who's just now becoming interested in uh, preparedness and talking about protein and stacking protein lack thereof. And Then I'm over here cooking grilling chicken on the grill boom so that uh you know meal prep for the week and all that and got me to thinking about y'all and so i took some very quick notes on the palm pilot 1.0 and i figured we'd talk about that so food storage long-term food storage is something that most people who are into preparedness uh, agree on yes you need long-term food storage and oftentimes this manifests itself as grains you know corn rice wheat beans or freeze-dried foods which are some are better and some are worse this is not that video but oh, even your freeze-dried foods uh, the pre-packaged stuff is oftentimes you know chicken or rice with chicken and it's just a little bit of chicken or beef stew and it's just a little bit of beef stew or goulash or whatever so my point is it's not exclusively protein and there's not a lot of protein in it there's enough but it's not a lot so what do you do for long-term food storage for protein well the first thing that you can do is you can can protein whether this is protein that's already been put in a can for you or it's protein that you canned yourself with mason jars. Or if you own a cannery and you just happen to be stacking protein to the rafters, good for you, good for you. And so in the grocery store, you can find um, whole chickens in a can about yay big. That's pretty cool. You can find canned chicken um, that is like shredded uh, chicken breasts that's been canned as well. You can get, obviously get canned tuna. <clears throat> Everybody knows about spam. Do you know that spam, there's also turkey spam for those that um, eat kosher. So that's good to know. There's turkey spam, All right? So canned meats from the grocery store. It's, it's out there. It's not as prevalent as you might hope, but it is out there. You could also pressure can your own meat. This chicken that I'm growing up right here, we have, <coughs> excuse me, 288 quarts of this chicken pressure canned. 288 quarts of this chicken pressure canned. And shout out to the sisters who did that because that was a piece of work right there. But that's, uh, what is that, 536 pounds of chicken? pressure can and it'll last for several years two three five years you can pressure can uh, ground beef you can pressure can stew meat you can pressure can you know deer sheep cows goats whatever chicken You can press your can all that, which is awesome. And like I said, it'll last on a shelf two, three, maybe five years, which gets back to the point of you should be storing things you eat so that you can rotate through them, right? The next thing, next way that one could acquire protein is the old hunt fish trap scavenge forage. And Many of y'all are aware what I think of that. In an SHTF scenario, man. Now, in some areas of the world, the population density is low enough and the animal population is high enough that it is a viable way to provide some and or all of your meat. But if you look at people, for example, that live in Alaska and literally hunt and fish and trap for their meat, it's a full-time job during those seasons. So you have to take that into account as well. How much money are you gonna spend now? And how many calories, your calories, are you going to spend 
being able to do that. And with that, a lot of the common ways that we store stuff that we've hunted, fished, trapped, scavenged, and foraged is grid dependent. And many people say, well, Bear, you can make a smokehouse. To which I would reply, you are correct. You can make a smokehouse too. Have you ever done it? Are you going to try and figure out how to do it when the world ends? Well, I have it on a PDF on my, my uh, tablet. Cool. What if we get EMP'd, man, or the tablet breaks? Do you know tablets break? Raise your hand if you have children. Raise the hand if you ever bought them technology. You know those things break? Yeah, they break. Now what? All right, and so improvising, in my opinion, a smokehouse uh, is a plan for failure down the road when you need it. So you should probably, if that's part of your plan, start thinking about how do I do that now so that when it matters, you're not dead in the water, right? <clears throat> the other thing about hunting and fishing is it's not guaranteed. Um, you can have a great day of hunting followed by a bad month of hunting. You can have a great week of trapping followed by a bad season of trapping. You can have a great day of fishing followed by a bad week of fishing. And so these are intermittent calories, right? They're not dependable. So is it a viable option? Yes, to what degree? If it's going to comprise the entirety of all the protein that you eat, I would start looking either A, you need to be really good at it in a place with a low enough human population density and a high enough animal population density to make it viable. Or look at how that becomes a supplemental means for you to get protein, not the primary means for you to get protein. Because as I'm fond of saying, if we could all do it all the time, we would be, right? Anybody who's ever like actually hunted deer uh, or anything else knows you, there's no guarantees, man. And so if you're starving to death, you don't want to be uh, dependent upon fate or luck or the father, as I would say, to deliver unto you a meal. So, next is dried, dried protein. You look at things like uh, biltong, beef jerky, um, dried or smoked fish, um, or freeze-dried, right? So there's air-dried and then freeze-dried. And so, again, freeze-dried, like number 10 cans, it's available. Um, it's expensive, but it is available. And a lot of the stuff, a lot of the protein that's in prepper food, in number 10 cans of prepper food, or in um, your number 10 cans of, say you go to the, rest, the restaurant store and you get a big old can of spaghetti uh, and meat sauce, Okay, that meat sauce oftentimes has TVP, textured, ve textured vegetable protein in it. That's, does it have protein? Yes. Is it the same as this chicken breast? No. So quality also matters. Is it better than starving to death? Absolutely, it's better than starving to death. But I put those things look farther down the list than, you know, chicken breast. Because, yum, bro. Yum oh, what, what was that chick's name? Rachel Ray? $40 a day, remember that? Yeah. Yum oh. Why do I know that? Anyway, I digress. Flip the chicken bear, talk to the camera bear, roger that, on it. You got it, sounds good. So, dried, there are options here, but they are expensive and so Maybe look at doing it at home when it comes to drying. I have a friend that uh, makes awesome homemade biltong. If you don't know what it is, biltong, Google it. It, it rocks. It's a type of beef jerky. Um, it's phenomenal, right? Start practicing, and as you practice, you learn how to do it, and what do I need to have on hand to be able to do it when it matters, right? Farming, another way to have long-term protein, and so... For us, farming slash homesteading, you know, we have sheep, we have goats, we have cows, we have chickens, we have turkeys. You could even add in here, if you have a greenhouse, aquaponics with something like tilapia. Super cool. That would be super cool. I aspire to do that one day. Unfortunately, that day is not today. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be any time this year, 
but hopefully this decade I aspire to be able to do that. I think it's a super cool system and it's an efficient system, which is awesome. Uh, but we actually have the opposite problem right now here on our homestead. It's part of why I'm cooking all this chicken. Um, I'm cooking 15 pounds of chicken right now. Not that I anticipate eating all that by myself this week, but uh, my wife is actually going to freeze dry some of it, which is cool. So now we'll have freeze dried chicken breast because she lost her dang mind and bought a $4,000 Harvest Right freeze dryer. Different video for a different time. And uh, I'm going to eat some of it, but we need, we need to make room in our freezers because I have 10 lambs that need to go to freezer camp. That's a good problem to have, right? So rather than paying for feed to feed them, I would rather they feed me. So I got 10 lambs that need to go to freezer camp. And then uh, we just had two calves. Within the last 10 days, we've had two calves. So flocks and herds are growing. Chickens also have the, uh, the honor, as do turkeys, of giving you eggs, lots of eggs. And the chickens have a superpower. They turn all kinds of things that you would not want to eat bugs and carcasses and dirt and worms and uh trash all that garden scraps they turn all of that into manure which makes great compost eggs which are delicious and very good for you and meat and if you leave them alone and or help them with an incubator they make more chickens it's it's incredible same thing with the sheep man food water shelter and they make more sheep cows food water shelter they make more cows it's incredible it's it's almost as if there's some type of divine design with these animals uh so i digress point being i gotta make room in my freezer for all these dang sheep that i gotta eat what a burden right um and then when you add in again things like the aquaponics system for your green greenhouse on a small scale farm small scale agriculture uh slash homestead it's pretty easy to store this protein because it's right over there alive and it's pretty easy to move it. I could throw a rope around its neck and just walk it from where it is to where I want it. Uh, when I get hungry and I know it's not very sportsmanlike, but when I get hungry, the hunt doesn't take very long, right? It's one of those, they're trapped in the corner of the fence. Got it. Next. So much more reliable than hunting. Uh, not that I don't enjoy schwacking a white tail and grilling those back straps and making venison stew and all that, but much more reliable. Very little of my time and effort has to go into where's the next piece of meat going to come from around here because I'm surrounded by it as part of our agricultural systems. Uh, and then lastly, long-term food storage uh, protein. You could abstain. I don't know if that's the best idea. Now, some people already abstain from eating meat or they eat very little meat. In fact, we know people that eat no meat or very little meat. And that's fine. If that you do you, boo. Here's the thing, though. Your body needs protein. And so right now, these people that don't eat meat or eat very little meat are getting protein from other sources. And so if your long-term food storage is not designed in such a way to be providing that protein that right now is provided by the system, you know, it's going to probably be pretty hard to get soy nuggets when the world has ended, however you define the world ending, right? So right now that protein is coming in from other sources and there are grains that are high in proteins. There are plants that are high in proteins, but animal protein specifically, many dietitians now are all coming to the same consensus that it was the increased consumption as omnivores that human beings are animal based omnivores and it's that increased protein that if you if you want to get follow the trust the science man right it was that extra protein that we were eating rather than plant matter and carbohydrates the macro protein and the micronutrients that's in that macro protein is what allowed our brains to get so big Right, and develop our speech and our cognitive abilities and to become hunters and use tools and all of that. So our evolution, if you track with that school of thought, 
can be tied to, many dietitians are saying now, the increased uh, intake of high quality protein, specifically fatty red meat and organ meats. So if that's the case, what does that say for your ability to perform and your cognitive functions uh, on you know, one of the most stressful days of your life? when the world's ending, however you define that. So abstention isn't necessarily a bad thing if you have moral, ethical reasons as to why you wouldn't eat meat. But think about where are you currently getting protein from that's not meat, and how are you going to provide that uh, when the train wreck that is the system happens? When the train comes flying off the tracks, how are you going to get protein? So I'll tell you for us, we have, I mentioned the canned chicken. We have a lot of canned meat, including chicken and uh, red meat, you know, beef and venison. I have not canned any sheep, but there will come a day, believe me. We have a lot of that. We do a bit of hunting and a bit of fishing, but not a lot because A, I frankly don't have the time. B, I'm not necessarily that great at it. I'm better at hunting than I am at fishing, but... Um, I don't have the time to dedicate to it and the resource and right now then there are seasons that control this so right now i'd be breaking the law if i was to walk out in the woods and just start schwacking bambies because i thought it'd be a good idea to have venison stew tonight so and yes there are many people that don't give a one flip about that law and hey man you reap what you sow that's all i'm gonna say about that as for dried stuff like i mentioned um, we have some freeze-dried protein. This is not freeze-dried food is a long-term option, but freeze-drying food is not a long-term option. You got to have the grid for that. That thing sucks so much electricity to do what it does. It's not the type of thing where we are going to build um, a renewable energy microgrid to be able to support the freeze dryer. Right? That's not going to happen. It's going to be a boat anchor if we ever get EMP'd or we have a long-term power outage. But we do have some freeze-dried protein and we're working on freeze-drying more. Obviously, we farm, we do a lot of homesteading and we're pretty good at making meat. In fact, I'd say we're better at making meat than we are at making vegetables, which is why we're working, always working diligently on our gardens and our row crops to get better and better at that because the animals just kind of take care of themselves. You give them food, water, shelter, and uh, they make you eggs and manure and babies. And that's pretty cool. Like I said, almost as if there's a divine plan there. So, and then abstention. I don't abstain from eating meat. I love eating meat. I'm a, well, gosh dang, I'm an animal, man. They call me the bear. I love eating meat. But if you abstain from eating meat, think about what are those sources where you're getting high quality protein from now and how do you perpetuate that in the future? I'm curious to know from y'all, what do you do for long-term protein food storage specifics? Hit me in the comments. If you're new here, consider subscribing, maybe share this out to the folks, you know, your folks, your preparedness folks, the people you're gonna strap on the gas mask and the flamethrowers with and fight the zombies, whatever, your people. Bless y'all, shalom.